Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lane Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar in a different style than what we typically do. We will be having this webinar as more of an interview on Lean Sales and Marketing, facilitated by Ed Miller and Jim Huntinger. Jim will be serving as MC and asking questions presented by our listeners. Ed Miller is the president of Strategy Development Services, a consulting company he founded to help companies along in their lean business transformation by developing corporate and go-to market strategies based on lean business principles. Ed was also the former vice president of marketing and sales at the YMO company. So since this whole session is going to be a Q&A, if you want to submit your questions, we can do that in the little toolbar bar you should have on the right-hand side. And if we get a chance, we'll try and address them. Um, also, we will be recording this in case you want to refer back to it later. So for now, I'll turn it over to Jim. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, Ed, of course, thank you for coming in here and, and speaking with us. Um, so we'll get right into it, and, and like I said, a majority of the questions that I'm going to ask are actually ones that were submitted by uh, people that, as they registered for the webinar. So these will be questions coming from from the folks that are out there listening. Um, but to kind of start it off, um, what I wanted to ask was kind of two questions, kind of answer them. But one is, you know, how does lean thinking impact kind of commercial strategies um, of business? And how does it actually impact the process of, of selling and marketing? So that's kind of two questions, but try to kind of set up the picture for us. Sure. I appreciate that, and I appreciate time with you, Jim, as always. Um, you know, the commercial strategy of, uh, of a company is, is always, for especially companies that are along a lean journey, often forget that often don't tie it or link it together. And if you think about the lean transformation, it's, it really is, a you know, for, to be successful, the successful companies view lean as part of their strategy. It is part of the strategy in how they're, they're transforming the culture. It's part of the strategy of how they go to market and uh, service and win their customers. Uh, and often it's it's just thought of as just an internal uh, operations, whether it's manufacturing uh, or or product development. Even leaning sales and marketing activities people can do. But if you really think about how it could impact your commercial strategy, it changes it totally upside down and to a point where it could be a a true competitive advantage for a, for a company. And specifically, what is the mo most important things that, that as you go to lean, as you transform to lean practices in your business, happen? You free up your people, and you get a, rid of and eliminate lots of waste. That results in speed. You're able to now compete on speed faster than anybody else could do before. Things that used to take weeks can take an hour. Uh, and, and so that, that's wh whether you're doing a quoting a job. I mean, think about it. Those who quote a job and it takes, and they don't get back to the customer for six weeks. Uh, there's some businesses I've been a part of, some of my old businesses, in fact, took us six weeks to deliver a quote back to the customer. Well, you, you get the quote in a, in a few hours, you're... Do you have a higher chance of getting that job? Uh, are you able to uh, answer a customer's need quickly and efficiently? You've saved the customer money and you saved yourself money. And of course, you've endeared yourself to your customer. So competing on speed and thinking about that can really have a significant impact on the commercial strategy of the business. Also, furthermore, in, in, in developing your lean go-to-market approach and finding differentiated ways to compete, transforming your, uh, you know, who transforms? It's us, people. Uh, and I went through my own personal journey. 
And as you transform, what's the biggest thing that you you really get to understand? It you you really learn how to see opportunities differently, and those opportunities translate to new commercial strategies. Lean also impacts. Uh, your commercial terms and conditions, how you sell, how you collect, how you, you know, all, all of those terms of business, doing business. Because if you really want to compete on speed, you want material flowing, you want your services, if you're a service company flowing, and you want your cash flowing. And, and sometimes uh, many companies put terms and conditions of sale that drive batch thinking that force people into uh, committing more resources than they need at any given time. So it allows you to align with your customer real time and, and providing solutions to their needs in a real time continuous flow way, or at least a better flow way. Uh, so, you know, if, if for those that are involved in a lean journey, they can understand that, you know, the thinking that you have and how you, uh, as people have used out, used the term lean out a process, okay, that if you really treat it as a way to think and basically the heart of your culture, you'll figure out ways to really leverage that newfound capabilities in speed, and get closer and more intimate with your customers. And that impacts terms and conditions all the way to how you position yourself in the market. So uh, I know it's a little long answer on, on competing on speed. Uh, the second question was marketing and sales itself. Yeah. yeah, of course, that one's easier to explain because any process in marketing and selling, it's still a process. And and if you go ahead and analyze and follow the same tools that you've learned in leaning out or applying lean thinking in any work effort or any de department or activity, you, you, it's the same idea as hold. Develop a value stream map and eliminate the things that cause uh, uh, that, that are wasteful. And as you do that, what you find is you're able to free up your people to sell more, to have more face time in customers. How much of your sales force's time is spent uh, on administrative activity? Well, you can eliminate some of that waste that does not add value. Some of it is, re is needed in order to do the job. But how you do it really, uh, you know, really can make you faster and competing on speed. Uh, in marketing, Maintaining a price book, for example, for those who have to uh, uh, maintain pricing. In my old business, it took uh, three months of six people to do. Well, if you take a look at that process and tear it apart, really, uh, in two weeks, uh, we were able to do price books. Okay, so, uh, it, you know, those are just some examples uh, on it. But the real opportunity is not so much reducing waste or getting limit, eliminating waste in, the, in sales and marketing processes. It's leveraging those lean capabilities and most important, the people thinking. I want all my salespeople and marketing people to really look and say, from a cultural point of view, as we transform to lean, how can our experience help our customers be more efficient, lower cost, and uh, quicker in what they do. And the company that can offer those capabilities in their services and products usually wins because you've now created, added to your value proposition to your customers. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, I think it does. One thing, let me kind of carry on with that. You mentioned, you kind of even mentioned the term certainly culture a couple times, and I think you might have started uh, alluding to some of the aspects of it. Could you yeah. Did you discuss that in a little bit more detail about, you know, how, how do you effectively implement a lean culture, um, obviously in, particularly in the, the sales and marketing aspects of the business? And probably how does it relate to the other parts of the business? And, and it's the culture part that separates 
in my opinion, the companies that have been successful in their lean transformation from those that have taken it to a glass ceiling and stopped. Uh, and because the culture impacts how we think and how we, how we work together, how we look and uh, of opportunities. And if you're able to get that culture developed over time, which we were and, and or what I personally experienced in my own journey, new, new opportunities suddenly appear. I mean, I learned very quickly as I was going through my own personal journey that I was walking by opportunities every day, and I didn't even know it. And again, learning how to see those opportunities was, to me, cultural and the most transformative part of this journey. Because once you do that, learning how to see, the opportunities are endless. It will never end. And there's always more to take yourself to another level and another level and another level. And that's exciting. It's also a lot more fun than just staying where you are uh, because you're constantly learning. And so the cultural aspects uh, is, the, is the key element, whether you're in marketing and sales or in operations or in any part of the business, to accelerate change and make it impactful on your customers and, and just as importantly, the people within your company. Yeah, with that, um, are there are in order to kind of I guess, show the value of lean concepts to yourselves and marketing folks, are there any any specific te techniques or things you should show them to help them through that process? And absolutely, uh, you know, one of the um, things is to get involved right away in kaizens and opportunities to just start, not sit in a classroom and learn how to do a value stream map but it's to do. I, I believe in very little training and lots of doing because that's the only way to see it and live it and learn it. I couldn't do what I do right now without have living it. And, and so getting involved that way, then you start challenging yourself for finding new ways. In sales and marketing, the thinking was the same as we look for opportunities to be better, faster, and more effective in selling and marketing our products and services. So uh, you really, the first part is really get involved in things that help you see things, and that's really getting involved in Kaizen's. And then the next part is to then challenge yourself, okay, how do I take that and relate that to what I do and what my team does every day? And you do that together. And you find that you get some interesting things. You'll start off with small ideas, but eventually they'll be really big at breakthrough ideas that can change the way you compete. And that's why, it, to us, it led to truly competing on speed, uh, things that used to be very customized to, uh, uh, in, in my particular business, became highly standard work and flow work, if you will, inside, but to the outside, to our customers, it looked like it was very customized to them. Now, how did we do that? We had to restructure products. We had to restructure how we sold. We became more modular in our thinking and in allowing, people, allowing us to tailor uh, our products and services to specific applications. And... Uh, and, and so it really changed how we listened to customers. Often salespeople, for example, go, go and see a customer, they knock on a door, they go in and say, hey, look, I, ha I represent or have these type of products, this type of product, or I can do this type of service from a contractor, uh, an HVAC contractor, I can, uh, I, you know, do you need HVAC work? Whereas if you really learn how to listen, you, what you're trying to do is, what, what gets in your way of getting your business done? What, you, you start learning things that, uh, that, you know, would you be a better business if you can do things faster? And, and you know, you start thinking, taking things apart in terms of how you listen to your customers. 
because we're, you know, many times it, without this type of thinking, you're preconditioned to listen to your customers in a way that they fit into your solutions instead of trying to listen to their needs first and then you come up with a solution that better fits their needs. And if you're going to do that, your products and services have to be very flexible and capable of doing that. And, by do, and the only way you can do that is truly, without a lot of cost, is to take the waste out of what you do, out of your products, out of your, out of, and out of your solutions. Let's talk about a physical product. Sure. We had customers in a, you know, in a, that, that are, uh, that put by our floor boxes. These are poke throughs actually in a, in a major, uh, in a major high rise building. And it took all of us, all of our boxes are us and our two other major competitors uh, about, it was about the same cost and it took about the same amount of time to install these boxes. Typically, uh, in an eight-hour period, two contractors would install them, would install uh, 26 of them, let's say. Well, we came out with a box uh, that two, you don't need two contractors. One contractor, you can install 106 of them in the same, out of, uh, in the same you know, eight-hour day. So think of it. It only took half the amount of people and, uh, you know, four times the amount of, of uh, things being installed. This is an electrical contractor in this case. Uh, and, uh, and didn't I just help that guy compete on speed, get off the job quicker, do a more professional job, get their customer uh, job done quicker so they can open up their facility to work? I mean, you, all those benefits. Just, just happened. That's a huge value proposition uh, that you have. And the only way that you could do that is by truly understanding what people do to install, what they, how to, what they do to use it, and uh, rather than say, let's just make a floor box, okay? Okay. And the cost out of it. So it, the whole thinking had to be turned around, and the best way to get that is start living it. Okay, and, and, and along that line, you mentioned about yeah, you know, the actual doing, um, the learn by doing. Um, would, learn by from, from the continuous improvement activities you mentioned, the Kaizen. Are there any specific examples, you know, in your own experience that you could share that were maybe good examples or good starting points for people to, um, again, in the sales and marketing arena, to kind of start get it to help them move things forward. I, I think that's some questions people, and I get asked that at, from time to time, you know, how can I get, how can I get my people understanding and, and moving in the right direction? Do you have some specific examples in your experience of improvement sure. activities to help in that? As, as with many companies, even my, with my company, it started with, uh, uh, with many of us taking part in, the commercial guys taking part in in manufacturing kaizens. They were very tangible, very easy to see. And then we applied that same thinking in any uh, and all of the marketing and sales operations. Let's take quoting. That's a very important part of responding to your customer and, uh, and providing a, a solution. And, and you have to understand that, you know, you, here are the big boxes that are involved in that. You have to understand the customer. Sometimes you get a set of plans and specs from them. Hopefully, if you're in there earlier and have good, strong customer relationships, you're able to influence those plans and specs. And then you get those plans and specs and you got to do a takeoff. A taking off means I'm going to take off from their customer specs the solutions I can provide them to answer those plans and specs. So that's taking off a job. Then I have to price it. Uh, and estimate uh, what the uh, if it's if it's physical product uh, time and material and uh, or product cost if it's services what uh, how much labor I'm going to be uh, putting in so whether it doesn't matter what business you're in whether you're in a service business or if you're providing a quote you have to go through various steps like that and sometimes they get queued up uh, an insurance company. Get, getting a quote to you 
is let's say you're, uh, you want to get a, a high value life insurance policy. Well, how long does it take for them to come back? On average, the underwriting takes 26 days to underwrite a life insurance policy. Okay. Well, you go ahead and, t and, and do a process map or a value stream map and you see why. Most of it is queued. It's waiting. And that's what you find when in your doing your quoting. You're either waiting on this, you're waiting on that person, you're waiting on that, you know, or or your processes are built where you don't trust anybody to make a decision. So you have five people doing the same thing. I mean, all of these come up when you when you do this. So you get your guys involved in in doing a real life improvement of, uh, in a Kaizen event. You're uh, you'll start changing some minds. Keep in mind, Kaizen is more than just an event. There are Kaizen events, but as it gets in your culture, Kaizen simply means change for the better. And you should be finding a better way every day in doing your job. That's culture. When you've gone ahead and implement and had that kind of impact on your people, their jobs become a lot more fun uh, because they're, they're always making their life easier for themselves. And that's the same thing in how you view your customers in bringing out your products and services. How can I make my customer's job easier, quicker, safer, all of those type of things? And, uh, and you really open up a whole new world of how to compete. Good. Well, that actually not, not only made me think of this, but this is actually probably the most, uh, most asked questions of the ones submitted, the variety of people asked questions around this are what, what are some of the um, uh, performance measures or, or uh, measurements you should use, obviously, with, with your people and within your sales and marketing organization that are helpful to, the, to, to moving people to become, uh, I guess, lean and, and part of a lean enterprise? And, and that one has always been a challenge for every, every group because the tendency is I want – it has to be very measurable. There's no – uh, question about it, but the, but the measures they often think about are just dollars, okay? And the ultimate, of course, is am I getting more orders? Am I getting more business? And, uh, and am I responding quick? Well, you can have other dimensions that involve your speed, how fast we implement uh, quotes, uh, you know, even handling a phone call. It has been proven uh, by many studies some by American Express, I may add, that, uh, that about 11 seconds hold on the phone, people get frustrated and they'll start hanging up. So uh, what's your abandoned call rate? What's, uh, what's the mean time to, uh, before they get a uh, average hold time, I should say, before they get a real person, when they need a real person? Uh, so those type of things impact. But really, as you start, you can think of very quantifiable measures that way. You could, uh, but you know, one of the things I would ask people to start thinking about is change the thinking from these customer typical customer satisfaction measures, which are usually quality and delivery, okay, uh, and these other things I just mentioned, hold time could are factors, quote time. Those are very hard measures, but think of customer experience. Change customer satisfaction to I want to provide the most outstanding customer experience where I'm the first group company or person that they want they think of when they need help okay so customer experience and 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 you've experienced as a consumer which places you like to go shop or eat or you know because those are the ones that have whether it's if it's a restaurant, yeah, good food. It's got to be critical. That's to me, it's a given. But what about the customer experience? Is it something you really enjoy? A place you really enjoy to be at? And so, how do you measure that? And that's always hard uh, to do it. Uh, and a lot of that comes through from how you uh, do. You are able to retain your customers? There are measures there uh, with a sales force and uh, measurement. Uh, you know, uh, people always just looked at the simple ones, uh, their sales and orders, uh, and profit in some cases, because uh, some people pay them on profit. I, uh, I'm one of those who believes and measure them on the activities they do. 
and and specifically, I'm looking for. I don't really care how many calls you make per day or per week. I care how meaningful those calls are. And so, uh, what do you get out of it? What are do we know who's who when you're calling? Do you uh, uh, did you do good pre-call planning? Do we have a sales plan and a strategy to how we're going to win over these guys? You know, these guys being our customers. So. Uh, you you got to go into much more depth in having something that's meaningful that drive you towards high customer experience as well as very high sales force and marketing effectiveness and uh, and so more than just the superficial measures it's hard but you, it can be done and we've done it. okay well, good are there any examples out there that you can share of, of uh, um, organizations that may have a, a be a good uh, show a good example of what a lean sales or sales and marketing organization um, should be, and actually even manufacturing, even non-manufacturing for that matter? Um, there, there aren't a lot that I point to because that I know of uh, that. Uh, uh, but there are uh, there are a bunch that uh, that do it that do it well. Uh, my old business, Wire Mold, uh, uh, still uh, operates in a good way of on uh, their sales and marketing uh, part, as I understand it. Uh, for for one, uh, there are others in Barry Waymiller companies. There's a slew of Barry Waymiller companies that I know of that have been practicing uh, lean transformation and which including through the whole enterprise um, you, you know so uh, those are just to name a few but it is one of the hardest thing the way to look at it is who is the most successful in true enterprise-wide lean transformation and some of the companies I just mentioned are uh, that uh, that are good examples for it but uh, uh, but it's it's very hard because it's not just one function who does lean marketing and selling well, because you have to uh, be totally in sync with uh, with the total operations. You know, I mentioned before uh, terms and conditions of sales. You know, terms and conditions of sales is often many times the cause of why you get batch orders. If you have uh, payment terms that are proximo terms, you're going to you're going to get the bulk of your orders, a high a high percentage of your orders, at the last week of the month because they get the largest longest dating on uh, on it. Instead, what you try to do is eliminate uh, promotions and and types of programs that drive people to. Uh, unnatural demand and that unnatural demand causes uh, causes a time crunch which brings in a, a, a batch amount a big amount a bubble and a bubble that sometimes if you're going to answer you have to work overtime so I believe in real demand and truly not forcing a customer to take something because you made the price attractive uh, earlier uh, I'll give you 10% if I get your order now. That's, you know, if you look at making the quarter, I suppose uh, make the month company, uh, you'll get a lot of that. Well, eventually you get figured out. I mean, you go into some retailers, I'll mention one, Bed Bath & Beyond. They constantly, uh, I don't know too many people that go in there without their 20% off coupon, <laughs> you know. So unless you get that coupon, they're going to lose sales. <laughs> so, because you know they're pricing it higher in order to get the twenty percent or a coupon. You know, I don't know if that's true. That's my opinion. But what I'm saying is, your customers get conditioned to how you sell and go to market. And whereas you get rid of all that garbage and be real with your customers in real time. So uh, it all links back uh, to that. Uh, and the few companies I mentioned already do it, some do it better than others, but there aren't many that I can point to that have taken this transformation all the way in the United States. Sure. Well, about this then, and we're really kind of getting close to our, maybe our, our wrap up time, but I 
This is, again, another question many people ask, and I think important one, and kind of carries on with you when you were uh, describing some organizations, and there aren't that many. Um, why don't businesses get engaged in, in lean um, marketing and, and selling, and, and how can uh, uh, people, people listening here, how, what could you tell them to help them to help their organizations overcome those hurdles and barriers? Well, you know, one of the questions is how many people that are listening are really from the marketing and sale and selling functions? And uh, I hope there's some. I don't know. I can't tell. I only see that there are 22 people. Uh, I see only see a number of people signed in. But, uh, uh, and I hope others will uh, listen to it with, the, uh, with this. But it, it comes from leadership. It's very hard, and even for me, when I started my journey, if I didn't have, in our case, Art Byrne, uh, who was our president at the time, uh, providing that path in a way that helped me see that, it would have been hard for me to just do it on my own. So the most successful companies is the engagement of the senior leadership team. And as a senior leader of my old company, uh, we all took part and said this was strategically the journey we're going to take the company on. That was the strategic direction of the company. It wasn't a project. And as a strategic direction, uh, since we needed, to, since we were all aligned on that, we all had a part to do it, and we had to figure that out. So the best way that we were able to get marketing and sales truly to understand that was to get them to recognize that this is the strategy of the company that yes you you are going to take part in kaizen's both cross-functionally and within your function and you're going to learn how to see and report back on what you're learning and how we can change the company to be better and and in fact change it yourself so they were empowered. So that was that is the breakthrough. That's the only way I believe you'll get sales and marketing involved in this transformation. It's through a genuine engagement of the senior leadership team to adopt this as a strategy of the company. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard that, you know, uh, it's going to be, you're going to get more of the issue, well, that company is different than mine. I do it, you know, we have a different situation. All my customers won't allow us to change our terms and conditions. Everyone does these. Uh, you know, not true. It really isn't. You, what your customers want are, is to have a trusting relationship that, uh, that they can trust. You're going to deliver what you say you're going to deliver with quality and at the right value and price. So, I mean, you do that and you do it quickly, uh, you win. Uh, it's very basic in that regard, but you really uh, you really have to get that engagement at the top level uh, to bring in the rest of the team and to challenge those teams to do it. That's the only way I can see doing it. That's why it does not proceed. It does not go beyond just an operations or an engineering or you know those areas. Okay, good. Well, great. Well, um, thank you, Ed. I certainly appreciate that and, and appreciate everybody's questions. I know we didn't quite get through all of them, but hopefully um, uh, we were able to answer some questions, or I should say Ed was able to answer some questions. And also, actually, too, hopefully hopefully he raised more questions with you than maybe even answered, um, just because obviously in a half hour time we're not going to be able to answer questions. We could probably sit here for multiple days with discussion and answering questions. So uh, again, Ed, thank you for your time and sharing your experience and knowledge. You appreciate that. And thank you, uh, folks, for being part of this. And I will kick it back over to Jacqueline to wrap things up. OK, thank you. All right. Well, uh, Jim and Ed, thank you so much for facilitating our session today. And to wrap up, I just wanted to remind everybody that the webinar is being recorded. So look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. And you can feel free to share this throughout your organization. So again, thank you, Jim, and thank you, Ed. And thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye. Bye.
Jim, are we still on? Yeah. Jim? 